Hi there. I am Krista Cowan. I am the corporate genealogist here at Ancestry. And this session's going to be a little bit different for a couple of reasons. One is we're being filmed, so hello to our friends on Facebook. Um, and the second one is because I have nothing prepared. <laughs> And here's why I have nothing prepared, okay? It's because this is called Watch a Genealogist Work. <laughs> why? <laughs> right? I'll tell you how this came about. Um, I have six nephews and the world's only niece, and they're all very big video gamers. <laughs> I think the niece is probably worse than any of the nephews, actually, <laughs> right? And they will sit, and they will play video games, and they will watch each other play video games. And then they'll go sit on YouTube, and on YouTube, they'll watch other kids play video games. And it makes no sense to me whatsoever. But then I said, I wonder if people would watch a genealogist do genealogy. And so I tried it on YouTube, and y'all did. <laughs> like, you just sat and watched me do genealogy. And so then our conference organizer said, I wonder if they would watch you do genealogy at a conference. And I said, well, they could, but then you have to stick a headset on me and make me talk while I do it. And so that's what we're gonna do. I don't know if it's going to work, but if it does, it's going to be amazing. But they asked me to focus specifically on through lines, okay? So th uh, through lines for DNA is what we're going to kind of, where I'm going to spend some of my time uh, while we spend this 20, 25 minutes together. Um, so let me explain just a little bit about what that is, then I'll dive in my through lines and you can see me maybe make some fun discoveries about things I didn't know. We'll see how that works out. So in order to get through lines, you have to have taken an Ancestry DNA test. You have to have a family tree on Ancestry, and that tree has to be either public or it has to be private searchable. If your tree is private unsearchable, you won't get through lines. Okay? <clears throat> so taking a DNA test on Ancestry, have a tree, that tree has to be either public or private searchable. And then the fourth thing is you have to make sure that your DNA and your tree are connected. And the way that they need to be connected is to the person who spit in the tube. Because you can't talk about DNA without talking about spit. I know, it's gross. OK. The way you know if your tree is connected correctly is when you're viewing your DNA homepage. If you look right across the top there, it'll say, this test is shown to match as as, and then it says linked to. And so I know that my test is linked correctly um, to me because I'm the person who took the DNA test. If all of those conditions have happened, OK? then you will have through lines. And through lines are going to show up right here on that DNA homepage. You can access them right here to explore your through lines. Now, here's what through lines look like. <clears throat> they look like my parents, apparently. <laughs> so that's my dad and my mom. These are my four grandparents. Okay? These are my eight great-grandparents. I still need to find a picture of that guy. Okay? Here's my great-greats and so on, just write down by generation. So basically, what Through Lines does is it takes your family tree, your pedigree, and it just turns it on its head, okay? So you've got the parents, and, the, and it's just broken out by generation. Then, okay, once we show that, then what we do is we look at your DNA matches. So you've taken a DNA test, 16 million other people have taken a DNA test, and we have given you a list of about 55,000 people who match you. Oh my gosh, Cecilia, you're from Vernal. I was going to make a joke about Vernal, and now I can't because she's sitting on the front row. <laughs> Just startled me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> totally derailed me. <laughs> so, so we take your tree, we take your DNA matches. The average person on Ancestry has about 55,000 DNA matches. Um, it just so happens that my parents skew the average. My dad has about 76,000. My mom has about 86,000. And part of the reason my dad has 76,000 matches is because part of his family's in Vernal. <laughs> And they're all married to each other, and everybody's related. My dad and I have never, my dad's never been to Vernal, and every time we talk about this and start working on our DNA matches together, he goes, the next time I come out to Utah, we need to drive out to Vernal and just walk down the street and say, are you my cousin? Are you? Because <laughs> apparently we're related to the whole town. Okay. So, um, so you have your list of DNA matches. If your DNA matches have also attached their 
public tree to themselves. Ancestry uses this through lines technology to see if we can figure out how you're related to those matches. So what we do is we say, OK, you've got this tree, and they've got this tree. And sometimes we get really lucky, and you have the same ancestor in both trees. And so that's easy, right? We can say, oh, look, you both descend from this guy. Here you go. Okay. Sometimes you have the ancestor in your tree, but they don't. And so then we have to kind of fill in the gap between where their tree ends up to the common ancestor. Well, besides the fact that you have a tree and your match has a tree, there are 100 million other family trees on Ancestry. So we just go to work looking and seeing if we can find a path to connect them to that common ancestor. Okay? Sometimes neither of you have the common ancestor in your tree. So your tree only goes back this far, their tree only goes back this far, and now we have to bridge this whole gap. Okay? So, when you both have the common ancestor in your tree, that's easy. It's pretty trustworthy. You still probably need to verify it. When one of you does not, there's going to be a little bit of a gap that we're going to try and fill in, and you're going to need to verify that. And if neither of you do, you're going to have to bridge that whole gap or look at that whole gap. So here's how you tell when you're looking at your through lines what you're dealing with. Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, I'm going to have to get down a little ways. OK, do you see this Mary Coughlin right here? <clears throat> she's green, and there's, you can't see it really well probably on the camera or here in the room even. It's, it's got like this really thin dotted line around it. Do you see that? What that tells me, then there's this little, ta or this little um, label here. It says potential ancestor. So I do not have Mary in my tree, and the way I know that is because dotted line and it says potential ancestor. Everybody else here is actually in my tree. Okay, but Mary is not. So she's one of those people where the gap had to be bridged by other trees on Ancestry. But she wouldn't be showing up if there wasn't some kind of a DNA connection that was causing that to generate. Okay? So there's DNA, and now the DNA and the trees are trying to work together to figure out how these people are related. Okay, we're going to look at an example of one of my through lines here. Actually, let's do this. Um, I talk about my dad all the time. My dad and I, you, some of you know, we spend every Sunday night on the phone. We actually spend that time working on our DNA matches, trying to figure out how they're related to us. And so because my dad's tested and my mom's tested, I don't actually use my own DNA results ever. So he gave me permission to use his. Uh, so we're going to look at my dad's DNA through lines here. And we're going to scroll down to the second great-grandfather of his. And the first thing that you're going to notice here on through lines is that um, through Samuel, my dad has 191 DNA matches <clears throat> that we think are also a descendant of Samuel. Okay? So I click on that, and here's what I'm going to see. Okay? Samuel, first of all, you need to know, he, he had 18 children. Well, OK, he didn't. Or there probably wouldn't be 18 of them, but 18 children. Okay? So we take that, those 18 children, and we kind of lay them out in um, birth order, right? So based on the birth year of uh, when each of them were born. And then underneath each one of these children, I'll see if I can make the screen bigger. I just learned this trick on a Mac, <laughs> okay? Um, you can see here we've got Jeanette. Jeanette is his oldest daughter. She was born in 1803. She died in 1904. And Through Lines thinks that 48 of our DNA matches are descendants of Jeanette. Okay? And then here's Jeanette's younger sister, Elizabeth. And Through Lines thinks that 25 of our DNA matches are descendants of Samuel through Elizabeth. And then here is um, their much younger sister, because new wife, <laughs> okay? uh, Martha Jane. And she was born in 1852, and 27 of the DNA matches are descendants to her. So that's how um, Through Lines just takes your matches and your tree data and tries to connect the two in a way that you can just start to explore some of those things. Okay? And then when you click on this, Okay, what's going to happen is it's going to reposition everything based on Jeanette, and now here are Jeanette's children, and her children who have children who have DNA tested. Now here's the interesting thing, okay? I'm seeing here's Jeanette, and here's Catherine, and Samuel, and Edwin. Jeanette had more children than that. But these are the only children she has that have descendants who have DNA tested. Okay, does that make sense? Any confusion? Question. 
Yes, in order to show up in through lines, you have to have a tree, and your tree has to be attached to your DNA, and it has to be either public or private searchable. So you could have, so it says I've got 43 DNA matches that connect through Catherine. I could have 106, and the other 53. Did I just do that math right in my head? Probably not, okay. <laughs> my dad's an accountant. He laughs at me all the time, okay. Um, I've got these other matches that could be in my match list that are descendants of Catherine, but if they haven't attached their tree to their DNA, or if they haven't even started a tree, through lines isn't gonna pull them in, right? So do you see why it's so important to have a tree? Even if your tree just is you and your parents, that's something, right? And that can get the system starting to work for you. So yeah, this is just the people who have DNA tested. So Jeanette has more children than these three children, but these are the only children who have descendants who've DNA tested. Here's the other thing, and I got asked this question just, uh, I got asked this question um, online actually earlier today. I did a little Instagram stories thing for Ancestry's Instagram account, if you wanna go check that out, little Q&A. And um, she said, the further back in time you go, shouldn't you have more people in a group of through lines for an ancestor? Okay, so let's do this little mental math, right? Samuel up there, he was born in 1809, January of 1809 in Scotland. Uh, he immigrated to the United States uh, with his wife and two stepchildren. Actually, he immigrated to Canada first. They had those two older daughters. Uh, then they immigrated down into Ohio. Then they immigrated to the Midwest. Ultimately, they ended up here in Utah. So he ended up with 18 children. Several years ago, I had this brilliant idea. I said, we should have a reunion of all the descendants of Samuel Mulliner for the 200th anniversary of his birth in the town he helped found, Lehigh, Utah. Because I work there now, and that's cool, right? If you ever hear yourself saying, we should have a reunion and I should plan it, just go take a nap. <laughs> the feeling will pass, I promise. Okay. So I said, we should, go, we should have this reunion. And I said, so I'm going to figure out if I can find all the descendants of Samuel Mulliner. And this was just before DNA testing, right? And so now it would have been so much easier because here they are, right? But back then, no. Um, and so I started tracing all of his descendants. By the time we had to like draw a line in the sand and say, we've got to actually invite people to this reunion, I had 6,800 descendants identified. <laughs> Your face is my favorite thing that just happened. <laughs> okay. 6,800 descendants. We sent out invitations. About 300 people showed up. It was great. Um, then I just got going, right? People were like, oh, we heard you're collecting all the descendants of Samuel Mulliner. So they'd send me information. Then DNA testing happened. Like, literally, look at these numbers, y'all. Let's go back here. Let's go back to Samuel. Okay. We're going to scroll back up. Okay, we're gonna scroll back over, okay? Oh, y'all, max. Someday, I'm gonna learn how to use them. Okay, we'll start here. Cynthia has four descendants who've tested. Robert has one, Albert has 36. Hiram has two. Fanny, <laughs> my scrolling skills need a little work, apparently. Okay, but what you're seeing here is all these groups of DNA matches that are starting to collect just based on the taking the test and, and showing up here. So you've got 27 DNA matches that are descendants and 25 and 48. You start collecting all these people that are descendants of this individual. And what's happened now with DNA testing in the last six years, as I've started adding these people to my tree, we've now identified more than 10,000 descendants from one guy born just 211 years ago, right? So, so you think about it, right? If he has 10,000 descendants, shouldn't I share DNA with all those people? Okay, not necessarily. Here's why. He's my third great-grandfather, which means anybody that I'm related to through him that's in the same generation as me is a fourth cousin. And you're only going to share DNA with about 75% of your fourth cousins. Because the way DNA is randomly inherited, it means by the time you get to about third cousins, you could be related to somebody you could have the same ancestor, and it's possible to just not share any DNA with them. About a 10% chance, 6 to 10%. And by the time you get to fourth cousins, it's about a 25% chance you won't share any DNA with them. So yes, theoretically, every time you go back a generation, that ancestor has more descendants. 
but you're not going to share DNA with every single one of them. And so it's super curious to me as we start to collect more data and I start to play around with this. And I mentioned my dad's an accountant and he, like, he knows all the numbers. And so he plays these little numbers games in his head, right? And so we've got 48 descendants of Jeanette, who was my, you know, my dad's half second great aunt. <laughs> Okay, so their, her descendants are going to be his half third cousins, and he matches 48 of them, but he only matches 25 of Elizabeth's. So the question is, does he match 48 of Jeanette's because Jeanette passed on the same chunk of Samuel's DNA that somehow got passed on to my dad, and so there's more of them that match? Or does he, does he match 48 of her descendants and only 25 of Elizabeth's because Elizabeth had fewer children, and Jeanette had more children. Let's try that again, okay? <laughs> um, so always click on the amount of shared DNA and check the chart and make sure that what the chart is saying the DNA says matches what the tree or the through lines are saying the tree relationship is. Does that make sense? Okay, it's kind of like a DNA 2301 concept, but are there any questions about it? Yeah. Say that one more time. Oh, okay. So, so what he's saying is if I know that this relationship is accurate, is there a way to adjust the chart? No. That chart is put together by our science team. And what it is, is it's strictly just based on the science of if you share 13 centimorgans, here's the possible relationships and the probability that it is one of those relationships. As we get more data, we will adjust these charts to reflect what the realities of the science are. But um, that's, yeah, you don't need to worry about that. I will give you a sneak peek. How are we doing on time? Okay, we have five more minutes. I will give you a sneak peek of a new thing that we're doing with the DNA match list. And this is brand new. As a matter of fact, it is so brand new. Where's my dad? It is so brand new that uh, the product manager said, hey, we're going to announce this at Roots Tech next week. And I said, well, that's awesome. And she said, it's not going to be ready yet, but you can tell people about it. And she said, and I'm going to give you early access to it. And she did this to me at 4.30 on Friday. And I had an entire bunch of presentations for Roots Tech to work on all weekend. And guess what I did instead? I played with the new tool. OK. That's what I did literally all day Saturday. <laughs> so here's the new tool. These are my dad's DNA matches. There's my brother right there at the top of the list. And what you'll see right here is a new icon. OK, see this new icon right here? When I click on my brother, I'm also going to see that new icon right here on the match page. And if I click on it, it's going to pop out a little side panel. And what it's going to let me do is it's going to let me say, this person on my match list is the same as this person in my tree. And then I can click View in Tree, and it's going to take it from my match list to my tree and show me, here, here's that person in your tree. Oh, see? Life changing over here. OK, click on it in your tree. Same icon, you can go right back to the match page. So it's a way to toggle back and forth between the people in your tree that are also on your match list. Okay? Again, at a parent-child relationship, that's maybe not all that important. But by the time you get to your half-third cousin one time removed, <laughs> being able to quickly find them in your tree, I think, is really, really important. OK, I spent way more time talking than actually just playing with the site. But hopefully, you got the idea. Like I said, sometimes it's a little bit awkward to do these watch the genealogist do her thing. Um, and sometimes it feels a little bit like I'm rambling. But um, I love the concept, just conceptually, the idea that through lines can just take all this data and present it to me in a way that makes a little more sense to my brain than sometimes that long list of DNA matches. So make sure you've got a tree. Make sure your tree is attached to your DNA to the person in the tree who took the test. Make sure your tree is either public or private searchable. And then you can go play with these tools yourselves. OK, thanks, guys. And thanks to Facebook. <laughs>